All right. Um, good almost afternoon, everyone. I'm Peter. I'm going to talk to you about uh, our equivariant filter, EQF, which is a general filter design for systems on homogeneous spaces. Um, so first, I want to give a little bit of motivation. So traditional observer designs, uh, particularly things like the extended Kármán filter, tend not to work very well for nonlinear systems on homogeneous spaces. And the fact is there are a lot of systems on homogeneous spaces that we care about designing observers for. So single bearing attitude estimation is a really easy example. Your system state lies on the two sphere, which is a homogeneous space with respect to SO3, the 3D rotations. But we found lots of other examples. So visual and inertial slam, multi-robot relative localization, and of course any system on a Lie group is a homogeneous space with respect to that Lie group. So what have we done in this paper? Well, there are some existing filter designs which take advantage of symmetry properties, but these are strictly defined on matrix Lie groups, which when you apply them to a non-trivial homogeneous space, ends up with non-minimal state representation. The other issue is that these filters only consider exponential coordinates, which may not always be the best choice for your uh, local linearization. So in contrast, the equivariant filter, the EQF, can be applied to any equivariant system on a homogeneous space. And what we also show in this paper is that any system can be made equivariant by extending, if necessary, the input space. So let's talk about the system dynamics. Let's say we have a state space, a smooth manifold M, and an input space, which is a vector space V. Then we suppose there's a system function F, which for any vector in the input space uh, gives a vector field on the manifold. And of course, since we're designing an observer, we need an output function as well. And this is just a map H from the smooth manifold, the state space M, to another manifold, an output space, calligraphy N, which for simplicity in this paper, we assumed was embedded in some sufficiently high dimensional Euclidean space. What does it mean for a space to be homogeneous? For a space to be homogeneous means that there exists a Lie group, which we'll label bold G, and a transitive action of that Lie group on the manifold. And what it means uh, for a function phi to be an action is that if I take two elements in the group, x and y, then first applying phi with x and then applying phi with y is equivalent to taking the product xy and applying our action phi with that product. So this, this is given in any homogeneous space. This is the definition of homogeneous spaces. Now, what about equivariant systems? So one of the things we show in the paper is that if you have an action of a group G on your manifold M, this induces an action on the vector fields on M, which we note uh, d star phi, and is given in the first highlighted equation. And then what we show is that there's always an equivariant extension to any system on homogeneous space, so oh, that you can find an action on the extended input space that agrees with the action on the vector field. So I just want to dive into that a little bit more. What I'm saying is there's a larger input space, calligraphy V, of which the original input space is a subspace, and a system function from calligraphy V to the vector fields on M, which agrees with the original system function on the subspace. But this one is sufficiently big that we can find an action psi so that applying psi to an input and then taking the system function to the vector fields is the same as taking the system function from the input to the vector fields and applying the induced action of the state. So this is useful because it lets us talk about an equivariant lift. So lift is just a map lambda from the manifold and the input space to the Lie algebra of the group. And it needs to satisfy for it to be an equivariant lift, it needs to satisfy first the lift condition, which tells us that the dynamics defined by lambda on the group project back down to the dynamics of the manifold, and it needs to satisfy an equivariance property, which in layman's terms means that lambda acts nicely with the symmetry actions we found 
on our state space and our input space. And so this lets us think about a lifted system. So if you have a system on the Lie group with the dynamics on the left, so a trajectory that uh, is entirely determined by the Lie group state x, a choice of origin psi zero, and the input signal u, then because of the lift condition, because of the way we've constructed the lift, that trajectory projects back down to valid system trajectories on the manifold. Okay. So this is what we use to define our observer dynamics on the Lie group. So we begin by choosing some origin configuration, psi zero, in the state space. And then we use that to define the observer dynamics entirely on the group. So x hat, our observer state, is a group element with the dynamics show. And what you see in the dynamics is there's a first the part involving lambda, which is just copying the lifted system dynamics. And then there's a delta term, which is in it an innovation that we have to choose somehow. So how are we going to choose that? Well, let's say the true system state, psi, we will just label it psi, it's an element of the manifold. We're going to define a global error, the global EQF error, E, which is obtained by applying the action of the group observer state inverse to the true state. And of course, this involves the true state element, which means, in general, it's not going to be accessible to us in our system. But what it gives us are the dynamics at the bottom, which, uh, for reasons explained further in the paper, are nicer dynamics to study in general. Um, and they, we can write them down entirely in terms of the error state, E, the origin choice, which again was an arbitrary choice we made, psi zero, and the, uh, what we call the origin velocity, v zero. And so what we do is we linearize these dynamics using some local coordinate chart. And uh, this is one of the powerful features of the EQF, the way we've designed it, is that this local coordinate chart can be a choice, and by choosing it how you want to, you can affect the performance of your observer. So all we require is that the local coordinate chart at the origin element, so that choice of origin, the local coordinates of that choice are zero. And then it gives us these linearized dynamics uh, of the global error. Now this matrix A0T, I've got the full expression for it on the next slide, but it's entirely determined by the origin configuration, psi zero, and the origin velocity, v0. It, no, it does not depend in any way on the uh, error state. And so if we want to filter for this system, uh, we simply have chosen to apply a Riccati observer. So that gives these dynamics for the EQF. So again, at the top, I've just written down the, uh, the same dynamics as before. There's an equation for delta which uh, is very similar to, uh, well, it's just a Riccati observer innovation. And at the bottom we have our actual matrix Riccati equation for the uh, gain matrix of the observer. And so P, Q are just positive definite gain matrices. And these may, but the important part of this is the uh, A0 matrix and the C matrix. And in particular, A0 does not at any point depend on the global error state E. So we applied this to an example in the paper. Um, and we tried to keep the example simple. Unfortunately, that meant that describing the example became kind of complicated. Uh, it's derotated body-fixed visual slam, which is to say, you consider the landmark coordinates to be static in the inertial frame, but you describe them with respect to your camera's position, which is moving with some velocity v. And so you end up with the uh, system function f, shown at the bottom, um, with, where landmarks in the body-fixed frame move with a velocity minus v, 
measurements in this system are bearings to the camera. So we can tell which direction points are in, but not how far away they are. And then we propose an EQF using a rotating scaling symmetry. So that's the map phi shown at the bottom. And of course, in the paper, we also derive the map psi on the input actions, uh, sorry, on the input uh, vectors. But I didn't want to crowd the slide too much. And finally, what we do is looking at the local error coordinates, we can write down a local Lyapunov function based on our Riccati observer dynamics. Uh, and the components for each of the landmarks are clearly decreasing. So to summarize, systems on homogeneous spaces are everywhere in robotics and mechatronics. And current, well, traditional observer designs, especially things like the extended Kalman filter, which linearize about an evolving state estimate, don't work very well in these situations most of the time. Now, what we show in this paper is that any system on a homogeneous space can be extended to a larger system, which is equivariant. And using that, we've designed the equivariant filter, the EQF, as a general observer design that takes advantage of the symmetry properties of homogeneous spaces, uh, but still defines the observer state, uh, sorry, the observer error, as a member of the homogeneous space, not a member of the Lie group. I'd like to thank my co-authors, Tarek and Rob. So, thank you.